Hello everybody, it is Mike, and I am going to do a review of a horror movie that I watched as a youngin, um, and I really enjoyed, and I got a new version of it. I actually helped this new version be made because I had a still-wrapped, um, factory-sealed uh, VHS tape and a DVD of this movie because I worked in a video store at one point, and um, that movie is called Massacre at Central High. This movie was released in 1976, and if we could get the Italian version, we'd have some hardcore sex scenes apparently in it, because apparently there were some scenes that were written uh, that included that. Hmm. So like most movies in 1976, there's a lot of female nudity. Uh, actually, every female character who had a role, for the most part, in this movie showed it off. So, and kind of surprises me because, you know, like, one of the actresses went on to be on one of the Friday the 13th. She was in soap operas, TV shows. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyway... Like I said, this movie was released in 1976. It was written and directed by Rene Dalder, I guess is how you pronounce his last name. And actually, he hated the music in this movie so much, the musical score, that he did not watch this movie for decades. Come on. Um, granted, it was the 70s. Everything was groovy. So some of the music was kind of groovy in this movie. And I guess he didn't like the fact that the mu music sounded... Like that, but why didn't he catch this before? I mean, he was the director, right? But anyway, uh, this movie stars Daryl Murray as our main guy, David. Uh, our other main guy was Andrew Stevens, and he played Mark. And then Kimberly Beck uh, played Teresa, and she is the beautiful blonde actress who was uh, the lead girl in, or the final girl in Friday the 13th Part 4. Um... And then, yeah, she, you know, she went on to be in, on Dynasty and uh, several soap operas and quite a bit of other things. And a couple of other side characters um, went on to bigger, better things. Um, Lanny O'Grady, uh, who was in, she played, I can't remember her name in that movie. Um, she went on to be on Eight is Enough. And we had Steve Bond, who went on to... Uh, General Hospital and various act movies and stuff. So yeah, we had a lot of well-known people in this movie. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of, there was another a Carradine. Ro uh, Robert Carradine went on to play Spoonie. Um, Lanny O'Grady was Jane. And yeah, that, that was those were the big ones. And those people were relatively popular during this time. Uh, so the plot, the plot in this movie is unique. It is, as for the most part, it's a horror movie, but it's kind of a slasher movie because the guy is very, the, the killer is very creative in the way he kills uh, the people. And there's a twist in this movie that you don't expect. So our main guy, David, transfers to Central High. And he is a friend of Mark, um, who is played by Andrew Stevens. Well, Andrew is a part of a controlling group, uh, basically a bullies, kind of a gang, that has the entire school in lockdown. Uh, you don't really see that they impact the teachers at all, and there's some craziness that goes on with these guys that should be addressed. So I guess we are just to assume that the teachers are afraid of these guys. You know, they're all rich and whatever. Well, David doesn't want to play that game. Um, he's not interested in, in being a bully. Uh, that's why he had issues in the past. Him and Mark were uh, both in a program, a special home or whatever, to deal with kids who uh, had anger issues or whatever. And so when David decides that he doesn't want to be a part of that, and he makes it very clear um, to the 
three main an antagonists of the beginning of this movie, and that is uh, Bruce, Craig, and Paul. Mark is a part of that group, but he doesn't, you know, participate in the awful things that these guys did. So um, David ends up being injured, and David gets revenge. And once his revenge is complete, the suppressed students, which there are several, um, start being bold and start kind of bullying other kids and acting like they are somehow better or whatever. So David doesn't take kindly to that. And they don't hide this point at all. I want you to know that, that David is never hidden as the person doing all the atrocities. But um, so then he goes after those kids that were the geeks and the losers and, you know, wear hearing aids and um, that were abused by the bullies. So that twist is so weird because you go from the bullies being taken out and then you have the kids that were being bullied kind of taking over for the bullies, which I guess would probably happen in real life. And then David's like, no, I didn't do that for this. I'm not putting up with this. And then, of course, he goes a little wacky. There's a little love triangle thing going on uh, between Mark and David and Teresa. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a fun movie. Now, it has been re-released, like I said, in a beautiful steelbook. Uh, by Synapse Films, and their plan was that uh, if this if the steelbook went over well, that they would actually release just a regular Blu-ray. So hopefully you guys will go check it out. Uh, so the like I said, the plot was basically um, new guy doesn't put up with crap, kills bullies, then the good the goody kids become bad, and he kills them too. Um, and then he just kind of, uh, yeah, and there's lots of boobs, so you'll love, uh, all you boob lovers will love that. Um, as far as the acting, for the most part, it was okay. I mean, m you know, most of these kids were relatively new to the acting field, so it wasn't like, you're go it's a horror movie, it's a 70s horror movie, you're not going to get, you know, Sir Whoever. Uh, acting. You're, you're going to get what you get. So yeah, it, it was pretty good. I, I mean, I, I enjoyed the characters um, and actually felt a little bad when some of them met their demise. As far as the scare factor, um, you pretty much know, like in every 70s horror movie for the most part, when somebody's going to get it. You just don't know how they're going to get it. So yeah, it's a fun movie. It's, uh, it is some of the scenes are very graphic um, as far as the death scene. So I would give it an 8. It's not like a crazy suspenseful horror, but it is just kind of fun um, 70s horror. So if you like 70s horror, uh, you will definitely enjoy this movie. Uh, I definitely will always keep this on my shelf uh, because it's one of those movies that has just always stuck with me. So... Hope you enjoyed this review and y'all take care.